This is Scratch Your Own Itch, the one show that delivers the conversations that we're afraid to share, but need to. This show is all about creating a life worth living. I'm Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. So you're going to hear conversations with creators and entrepreneurs talk about what they do, their current and past traumas, how they became who they are, and what they are truly curious about. This is the show where we talk about the things we think about a lot, but need to talk about more. Please take note that this show is not a substitute for actually creating a life worth living, because this show will stir your beliefs, make you question what it means to create a life worth living. So my promise to you is to always give you one question to answer for yourself today to start turning your dreams into a reality. Thoughts and feelings are two separate categories for a reason. If we think something is true and we continually habitually think that, eventually we'll start to feel that it's true. The continuum that I operate from in coaching or programs is thought. Just you. So my curiosity question is, have you ever been super overweight and lost your job and then lost your girlfriend soon after that and then really had no idea where you're going to go with your life after that? Well, if this is so, I want to let you know that you're not alone. Also, I want you to know that It may seem like the end of the world, but it's not. Okay, so let me set the tone. Life is not easy. Anyone that's ever lived more than 10 days knows that it's a struggle. But what if you started to reframe this story? You started telling yourself that life is a gift, a serious roller coaster ride, but it gets better. And I get it. It's hard to believe this when the events are not really in your favor in life, which results in low levels of serotonin in your brain. Yeah, serotonin is that chemical that is released when you're really, really happy. But when there's low serotonin levels because of the events that are happening in your life, there's a sadness, right? But what if through changing your beliefs, and changing your physical needs throughout the day. You could change your biology. If this makes you at least the littlest bit curious, this episode is for you. Because my guest today has not only transformed and reshaped his own biology to work for him instead of against him, even though he has gone through tons of hardship, he has built a new system of beliefs. With the help of fitness, nutrition, I A no, I AI tech equipment, and the power of sleep. He's absolutely without a doubt a person that I admire and look up to as a mentor. His name is Josh Trent, and he's the founder of Wellness Force. And throughout his 14 years inside the health and wellness area, Josh has helped thousands of men understand and develop physical and emotional intelligence. His knowledge and expertise goes way beyond every other fitness guru, though, because he takes a very awesome, well-rounded approach to developing the body, mind, and soul. He's worked with and interviewed hundreds of the sharpest minds in the wellness industry. And so... Without further ado, I'd love for you to listen in on this conversation with myself and Josh Trent. Hey, Josh, man, thank you so much for coming on Scratch Your Own Itch. Hey, my pleasure, man. That was an awesome intro. I so appreciate the kind words. Oh, uh, nothing but the truth. Like, uh, uh, I am interviewing 
a, an absolute master right now. So I'm like super like, okay, uh, let's do this. Um, let's so, do it. Yeah. The, the mission of the show is to really uh, scratch your own itch by solving a problem, you know, that you see in yourself and helping, you know, those around you do the same. And I'm sure we could talk about your story for hours, but I really like to just start off with that simple question of, what are you really curious and what question are you constantly trying to answer for you and others around you? Oh, the deepest question that I'm consistently leaning into is how do we trust ourselves as we discover more about this physical and emotional intelligence that we're all in the process of learning? How do we learn and enjoy the process as we do it, not be attached to the outcome and just be in the present moment? as we're gathering all these tips and skills and strategies and tools. This is really the paradox of being alive right now in our modern world. It's how do we be in the moment, but also have the aptitude, the bandwidth, the knowledge to take in the things that'll truly serve us. It's not just spiritual babble, it's real life. I mean, this paradox that we're in right now is probably the most challenging place to be. This modern world is not designed for us to have this bandwidth be explored um, a lot of times feeling emotions are put down, especially for men. This is what leads to repression and all these other negative aspects of human behavior. So for me, that big question is, how do we enjoy this thing? <laughs> how do we enjoy the process of discovering this physical and emotional? Dude, it's so it's such a tough and complex world that we live in nowadays because of it's it's the immense amount of information that I think makes a lot of us just confused and uh, like, who do you listen to, you know? So it's like, who do you really listen to? Uh, the person that yeah. comes into the gym with a really nice six pack and, and clearly has results, but you have no idea what kind of like work they're doing in the background, you know? And then, and then you go, I want that. So you listen to that person, but then you try it and it just may not work for you. And then you feel bad about yourself. So I gotta ask you, um, to kind of back up cuz you know I started this this podcast with uh well I started the introduction at least and that person was you the person that lost their job was overweight and then also lost their girlfriend soon after that like how did you have to reshape yourself and reshape your mind into into becoming the person you are today which is uh almost the opposite of that yeah man i'm thinking about this journey i've been on it essentially, you know, I can list off stories and thresholds and we can talk about uh, measuring all this progress through the lens of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, separation, and initi initiation return. But really at the end of the day, all roads, and I mean all roads, all roads lead to self-love. This journey for me, I'm 37 years old now, and this self-love journey really started with a deep kind of dark contrast of not knowing how to do that. This baseline skill set of breathing, you know, our autonomic function, like something is breathing us, something else pumps our heart, but we don't think about it that way. And I sure didn't, man, when I was a little kid, uh, I grew up in an environment that was not really healthy for emotional intelligence or even physical intelligence for that matter. So I'm thinking about for the first probably 15 years of my life, uh, I did not find myself in a place that was comfortable. It didn't really feel like a headquarters of love. It didn't really feel like a safe place. So I found a drug to cope with that and a drug that a lot of people find it's food, you know, the other F word, as I like to call it. And food <laughs> is something that is not talked about. It's the most overused drug in the world to quell emotions that people don't want to feel. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little kid. Both of my parents are not necessarily on their leaning edge of emotional intelligence and I'm stressed out. I'm sad. I don't know what's going on. So I use food to not feel flash forward. I'm 21. I'm at a party drinking. I'm like 280 pounds. I'm in a relationship I don't want. I'm in a career I don't want. I mean, talk about the universe giving me a huge mirror, trying to just wake me the F up. And so I had this moment where literally I'm standing there drinking beer out of a red party cup, like playing beer pong. 
And I just felt my body. I looked down at my stomach. I just felt exhausted. I was exhausted at this point. I was just so tired of running from something that I didn't know the cause of it being there that I just slammed the cup down. I felt this kind of feeling voice really in my head. And the voice said, you don't know what you want, but there is way more to life than this. There is way more than quelling these emotions and feeling terrible in your own body. And this kind of like culmination of self-hatred and lack of self-love ended with me slamming that beer cup down and running home three miles. And this is really interesting because when I get home, I opened up the computer and, and I think I typed in, how do I be healthy? How do I lose weight? That was the beginning for me. It was 21 years old, 280 pounds, all these things that weren't working in my life. And I got home and I just asked, I asked the universe a question. You know, Google is a place where people ask more intimate questions than they do to their own psychotherapist. And I asked Google, like, how do I let go of all this pain? How do I become this human being that I know is possible, but I have no freaking idea how I'm going to get there. And that's been my journey, man. I'm 37 now. So 21 to 37, I left everything I knew. I, I sold everything I owned. I moved to Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii uh, working out at the 24 hour fitness there. And the fitness manager came up to me and he was like, uh, I've seen you working out. You're getting pretty good results. Like, why don't you think about being a trainer? And I was like, what's a trainer? <laughs> I didn't even know what personal training was. You know, then I just found this line of really just the, the, the gateway to wellness is what I call fitness. It's what everyone really wants. And for the next 10 years, that's what I did. You know, I was training clients so much and doing something that I really believed in. But yet that pressure, that feeling of what's it like to actually be comfortable and love my body, it still wasn't there. And it took a couple more thresholds for me to understand and truly embody, uh, truly feel to just be love is totally different than reading it in a book or downloading a PDF. And so this journey, man, it really started from that deep, dark contrast of experiencing the feelings I didn't want to feel and then learning how to process those. And along the way, letting go of old weight. I think that my weight was really just an outer manifestation of unprocessed signals on the inside. Hey, Logan Tyler Nelson here. I would so appreciate it if you took some time to hit the subscribe button. I really want to just honestly live and give. Why? Because I was told when I was young that if you're feeling down, the best way to feel better is by lifting someone up again. So in an effort to make someone feel less alone, please hit the subscribe button so the podcast has a better chance of being found and making someone feel less alone. And if you're feeling down, hey, it can help you. Know that by hitting that subscribe button, you just did someone a huge favor. So thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Wow, wow, wow. Um, it's amazing because it's like to, to, to really love yourself is something that uh, may come off as, oh, that person is a narcissist if they love themselves too much. Or, oh, that person's overconfident to love themselves. And that's like another story that I think other people tell us that isn't true, uh, unfortunately. I, I think it's, it, I mean, of course, there's a difference between being a narcissist uh, slash overconfident between and, and the difference of like just being okay like truly loving yourself and for, yeah. for loving the person that you show up. And I think that's partly uh, being able to make a mistake and then live up to it and be responsible. And I think that's where you, I think are very different. Um, you talk about a lot about vulnerability and being responsible for your mistakes. Uh, how have you really allowed yourself and people around you to be vulnerable and just give them the permission to be vulnerable. Ooh, well, the permission to be vulnerable, it's like we all have our own unique box and it has its own unique lock that unlocks that. So there is no template for vulnerability. There is no guide for vulnerability. There's only the feeling of it. And that feeling, the nuances and the ridges and bumps of what it's like to actually experience being vulnerable to, to truly love yourself and give yourself to someone else in a moment, in a relationship, in a coaching relationship, whatever it is. This is the part that you can't get online. You can't download it. You can't read it in a book. But I'll tell you, there are some commonalities. And looking at the commonalities of vulnerability, it's, it's really about, number one, can you speak your truth? 
no matter if it hurts, no matter if it's uncomfortable. I mean, look, truth is the foundation. It's the bedrock of all connected relationships, even the one with yourself. You know, an emotional inventory is a beautiful place to start. It's like, hey, can we understand how we're actually showing up? And can we take an inventory of that? An inventory meaning, in other words, if you run a business, um, whether that business is a service business or a goods business, if you don't take an inventory, you don't know how much product you have, well, then you're going to go out of business pretty fast. And what bankrupts people emotionally, where people feel spent out at the end of their rope, completely strained and stretched to where they can't love themselves or other people is honestly not taking the inventory. And the inventory is a few different processes. The first one is what I like to call a intelligence check-in. So check in with how intelligent you are with yourself. You know, the real definition of intelligence is information and that information is not inspiring. It's not inspiring without emotion. So take an emotional intelligence inventory, go to a place like a park, uh, work out, make sure that your physical vessel is clean, eat a healthy meal, then go into a park and do a box breathing set. So box breathing is a radical tool, radical tool for an emotional inventory. And this all, by the way, leads to vulnerability, right? That was your initial question. So you get to the park, do box breathing, a five second inhale, a five second hold, a five second exhale, and then a five second hold. So draw a box and on each side of the box, there's a five second time frame. Once you do five cycles of that five second box breathing, take a piece of paper, like a journal or whatever it is, turn your phone off. This is a technology fast. Draw a line down the center of your journal. On the left side, write 10 things that you know aren't working. It could be your ways of being. It could be people in your life that are causing you pain, whatever it might be. Write down 10 things on the left that are not working. Then go to the right side of the page. Write down 10 things you're grateful for. 10 things that you're so happy, you're so filled with love and excitement that are in your life. Now, the, here comes the real hard part. This is the part where we all get to connect through human beings, through another, through having this bridge between knowing and doing. So you pick one thing from the left side of your paper that wasn't working. Could be a person, could be you know the fact that you get triggered, could be the fact that you're not really happy with your body, right? Circle it. On the right side of the page, out of those 10 things that you love, circle one of those. Here comes the bridge. In this moment of change, when you've decided, okay, I'm going to pick this one thing to change about myself or my structure in my life in the next seven days. And as I change that one thing that's causing me pain, I'm going to focus and use as a beacon the one thing that I'm most grateful for. Now, I'm going to connect these two things by reaching out to my community by speaking it into existence, by speaking the truth. It's going to happen because I say so, and that's it. There's nothing around that that needs to be explained anymore. And so you reach out to your community. You start having this conversation about the one thing that you're gonna change, the one thing that you're grateful, and how you're depending, and that's okay to depend on your community when you're going through change, because the core aspect here is in order to be vulnerable, you have to trust that you're not alone. If you're going to feel vulnerable, you have to first have a self-awareness practice about the fact that you're not alone. It's not just you and your monkey mind. You're designed, we are designed from a biological and a psychological perspective to connect with other human beings. That's why you and I are talking on this podcast. And that's honestly the first step towards vulnerability is that process. Yeah, it's that connect, that C word, that connection, like... Oh, when you connect with someone and they give you the feeling of, and it's it's really odd to, to put it into words, um, but to say to somebody, yeah, I feel, you know, quote unquote, whatever you feel, and connect with that person. Or, or and I love these little little like self reflections that you do, like the ten of what's not working and ten gratitudes, because that's like that is like. I, I don't like the word hack, but it really is the, the, the fast track to feeling um, or actually I think developing emotional intelligence, which is just so a part of your work. But I want to kind of um, pivot a little bit and ask you about why you think entrepreneurship, this word entrepreneurship is so, so, so popularized and, and what do you find that's kind of real about it and then what's kind of fake about it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, the word entrepreneur is someone who operates a business 
uh, that takes on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. An entrepreneur at its deepest core is someone that believes in themselves and they're willing to lean into the blade of discomfort. They're willing to recognize that this road is not going to be safe and it's going to scare the crap out of you sometimes. So I don't know if we can cuss on your show. I'm keeping it pretty clean. <laughs> so you can, so, you can go all go okay. for it, man. <laughs> okay. A real, a, the real definition of an entrepreneur is someone that's willing to take risk scared the shit out of themselves so they can peel off the layer of the person they were before. That's the true definition of an entrepreneur. But what's happening right now is because there's been literally hundreds of years where people have been enslaved by economic models that do not support a healthy human is that we have people that are glamorizing entrepreneurship to take advantage of people that are in pain. So Gary Vaynerchuk is an interesting example. A lot of people love Gary Vaynerchuk. Now, I have a lot of respect for Gary Vaynerchuk as an entrepreneur. I also believe that his narrative around hustle, grind, stress, sacrifice, struggle, all these things, yes, temporarily, they can be huge platforms for personal growth. But to have a lifestyle where you're always struggling, always grinding, always putting in 14 hour days, you're going to die and you're going to die really early and you're going to die possibly fulfilled with financial success and career success, but your soul is going to die. Like you cannot do 14 hour days forever. And I learned this the hard way in growing wellness force. You know, entrepreneurship is popular because a lot of people see it as manifest destiny and that you don't have to report to a boss, but you know who you get to report to that's a lot more chastising and can be a lot more negative than having a boss in a corporate structure. That's your monkey mind and your ego in your head. There is no more forceful and negative and abusive boss than someone that puts themselves in a stressful situation and their ego starts waving a pointer at them and barking orders at them all the time of the day, whether they're sleeping in bed at one in the morning or whether they're getting up to wake up to the sun and feeling pressure about the tasks that are ahead. This boss inside of our head, it's actually not our boss. That is a, another paradox where we think we're our mind, we think we're our thoughts, but it's such bullshit. You think you're that coffee that's in your system. You think that you're this entrepreneur who's creating their manifest destiny. Everything that we do is either coming from a place of our soul's love or our soul's fear. And that is the edge. That is the edge, my friend, that we're all walking right now. And this is why entrepreneurship is so popular is because it starts to wake people up. They start to feel alive. But in order to feel alive, you have to kill, you have to let go of these parts inside of you that are killing you at the same time. Wow. That was, uh, that was crazy. Oh, the, the, the um, connection that you've made uh, with entrepreneurship and, and this uh, this, I, I'm kind of, my mind's blowing a little bit right now just because of, uh, how well explained it is to, it, it feels honorable to like, say I'm an entrepreneur. It feels like also too, it's like this new, it's kind of like, um, the sort of, if you've ever been to LA and, and you ask someone what they do and they say right away, oh, I'm an actor, I'm an actress. But now yeah. it's happening everywhere <laughs> yeah, right. with entrepreneurship. And so it's just, uh, I'm just super curious about, um, you know, the definition of it and what, and also my, my real curiosity question is always like, what is real? And um, so it kind of steps into the next thing. How do you, how do you define something? Because feelings are a tricky thing. Like you may feel ugly, but it's not the truth. Or you may feel fat. And like to maybe someone's standard, you are a little bit overweight um, compared to someone else. But it's not the truth that you are like overly fat. You know what I mean? And and so I want to, yeah, like how do you define truth for, for yourself and then when you work with clients and stuff? How you define truth for yourself is if you breathe into it, does it feel good in your body, period? Like the true definition of what I believe to be true is what I actually feel to be true. Now, I'm not talking about feelings that may be manipulated by thought. A lot of times people, I want, I want to make this clear distinction, thoughts and feelings are two separate categories for a reason. If we think something is true, 
and we continually habitually think that, eventually we'll start to feel that it's true. The continuum that I operate from in coaching or programs is thought, feeling, action. We have a thought, then if that thought is true, we'll start to have a feeling and we feel that it's true, and then we'll take an action. So this goes to food, this goes to exercise, this goes to love with other people, love with ourselves. It's this, it's this feedback loop of thought, feeling, action that really can either uplift people and forge happy, loving, connected, trusting thoughts or forge disintegration thoughts, you know, self-hatred, I'm not good enough, I can't believe I'm in this body, people hate me, people don't like me. It's actually all bullshit. The only thing that's true is the one that feels good in your throat, your solar plexus, and your stomach. A great check-in to make any decision is put one hand on your heart, put your left hand on your heart, put your right hand on your stomach, do five counts of box breathing like we already went over, then ask yourself the question. Alison Armstrong talks about this, Brene Brown talks about this, and really the, the biggest question that we can ask around what is true is what feels true? Like what feels true in your body when you breathe it in? Forget about what you think is true. What do you feel is true? Because thoughts, <laughs> thoughts come and go. Feelings are the things that make us take action. So the feeling part of this continuum is the most important one. And that's what comes from our physical intelligence, from constantly leaning into, okay, what's real? What feels real? You know, when you're around somebody and you meet them in a coffee shop or in life, and you love everything they're saying, like what they're saying sounds so rad, but you're like, yeah, this person doesn't make me feel good when I'm around them. I don't know why, I just don't trust them or I just don't like them. It's this existential barometer that we were all born with. We're all built with this existential barometer. But some people start to quell, start to push that barometer down because they just let their thinking mind take over and thinking and feeling are two separate things, man. Wow. Ah, uh, geez. I love that you touch on this topic of, uh, of just, uh, truth is what feels good. And, and it, actually in acting school, we did that same thing, put our one hand on our chest and our other hand on our, um, belly and just breathe into a box breathing that you mm -hmm. say. Yeah. And it was just the way to check in. We would say, you know, like, uh, my name is, and then whatever our name is. So my name is Logan Tyler Nelson. I feel very, very agitated. And just to, to, to breathe into that, um, you know, and if you do that over and over, it's, it, you allow it to transform. Agitation may go into also naturally feeling free. Now that you said you're agitated, you feel liberated to actually say that word. And then yes. uh, I just think this is so important to actually note that uh, this is, yeah, a barometer because there's so much fake stuff that's online that you can click onto and these click funnels. And then you go, oh, this is how I'm going to make my next dollar. This is how I'm going to actually make a living. And even though it may look on the surface level like it's going to be your calling, if it doesn't feel right, then that's a good intuition that it's not right. So how have Absolutely. you used this? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but how have you used this to, to to find your own? I guess you went from a personal trainer to now you're you're an owner of uh, of a few things, a wellness force, and then also you have uh, the aura ring as well that you've uh, tapped into and and sort of scratched your own itch with technology and AI. So how is it like balancing all these things now? Yeah, man, the, the question about wellness technology and, and, and the kind of technology that can really help us to be a healthy human, the only way we're going to be a healthy human and somebody lives their life well is if we're self-aware. So all these concepts around technology, all roads lead to self-awareness and self-love. This is something that is talked about so much on books and podcasts and on the stage at personal development conferences, uh, Aura. Aura is great, but Aura is just a mindfulness tool. Aura is like a mirror for your health behaviors. And with Aura, you get to see how you're sleeping, how you're exercising, what's your heart rate variability, what's your sleep quality, things like this. But none of that really matters unless you're committed to one thing. And I'll tell you, like the biggest thing, the one thing that everyone can commit to, no matter who they are, no matter what they're up to, is will this device, will this mirror of mindfulness create positive feedback loops 
for long-term behavior change? Will this wellness device create positive feedback loops for long-term behavior change? Listen to your body when that question hits against your consciousness. Will this create something around my behaviors, around how I show up that I can trust? And so once we know a device is accurate, well, then, yeah, that device can help us make better decisions because it's just another mirror. But you know who else is a mirror? You know what else is a mirror besides just tech is a community that you trust. It's a, possibly a scale, possibly a mirror in your bathroom that you do mirror work to, having dialogues with yourself, telling yourself that you love yourself. It's not just something from a Saturday Night Live skit. <laughs> you know, we don't have to be Stuart Smalley looking into a mirror <laughs> saying, I, I love you and everybody <laughs> likes you. No, but there is truth in that paradigm. There is truth in that joke. And self-love is not a joke. Mindfulness is not a joke. And self-awareness is not a joke. These are all really deep practices that can be fortified by having monitors. You know, this, this self-monitoring strategy that Gretchen Rubin talks about. The more we measure things, how we're showing up, whether it's through data or through our relationships with other people, at the end of the day, it's coming down to how does it feel in our body? Is this thing making us feel more self-aware? And for me, like that's been a big piece of wellness force, you know, with wellness force, like I really just want to help as many human beings as possible live their life well, because that's the, the journey that I'm on. That's what I'm doing. And I'm, I don't shy away from that. There's no bullshit that I don't have this thing completely wired and figure out yet. Uh, I do not have to be a black belt to teach a white belt. And that goes for everyone listening, wherever you are, wherever you've been, whatever you're learning. Just know that you're in a perfect place right now to help somebody that is just starting. You don't have to be exactly where the people are that you're helping. All you have to do is just be a little bit further along the way. And so those are the kind of key pieces here. It's like understanding who we are, knowing where we are, knowing what we stand for. That, that's really the ethos and that's the guidance that we all deserve. Hey friends. So let me ask you real quick. Are you someone who's trying to get more visibility? Who's trying to be in front of the crowd? Well, if that's you, I wanna let you know that first of all, you're not alone. Second of all, if you wanna get on more podcasts or ones that actually scratch your own itch, meaning maybe you have a book or a business or maybe you do speaking, or if you don't yet do speaking, maybe you can, and maybe you'd love to. Well, I put something together for you. And in this little giveaway, I'm going to show you how to pitch yourself or podcast and how to actually be professional when you show up so you can be the next authority in your niche. So you can start scratching your own itch. I know what it's like to build something, create something, and then there just be crickets. No one wants that. You need to be seen. You need to be heard because you have a message to share, a message that is worthy of hearing. Podcasts nowadays, more than ever, are being consumed by people. And guess who's actually learning the knowledge that's being shared? It's podcast listeners. It gives you a license to be an authority in whatever area you really dream of being an authority in. So if this at all starts to give you a little itch to scratch, just email logan at logantylernelson.com. Again, that's logan at logantylernelson.com. Yes. Ah, yeah. Uh, just the, I love the part where you talk about sustainability. I mean, ah, it is um, setting you up for a, a process, a true process to take into. Uh, so I want to kind of go into, because we're running out of time, I want to go to the scratching the surface curiosity questions, where these are just um, not as deep questions and just sort of um, no, I, no rush. Like you don't have to answer them as fast as you can. It's not like the rapid fire questions, but just uh, you know, something that I I came up with where like I'm I got Josh Trent on today. I got I gotta get to these questions. So um, whenever, <laughs> cool man. When it, uh, so the first I guess the first question I'd love to ask you is um, 
if you could take and sit down, I mean, you've had several hundred interviews, like you, you're just a phenomenal interviewer. I want to ask you, who would you love to interview? And then what question would you love to ask them? Oh, this is actually one of the coolest <laughs> questions I've ever been asked. Uh, the very first person that came up for me was Alan Watts. And Alan Watts, even though he passed, has been one of my biggest mentors ever. And by the way, he could be your mentor too. There's thousands and thousands of videos of his teachings on YouTube. You know, way before I started the podcast, I would listen to Alan Watts in the shower on the way to work. Like when I, even when I was doing a job that I hated, uh, I would actually listen to Alan Watts because I felt in my body that what he was saying was true. And that right there is like, yeah, I eat my own dog food because I like the way it makes me feel when I do it. And with Alan Watts, like the one question I would ask Alan Watts is, where do we actually go when we die? What happens to us when we die? Because I got a glimpse of that at Rhythmia. I just got back from uh, 10 days in Costa Rica where I did four plant medicine ceremonies and breathing workshops and, you know, a huge part of me died out there. And I just saw how we are truly all connected. And um, yeah, I, I know that's the truth, but I would love to ask him, you know, somebody that's done so much work and helped so many other people crack the coconut of bullshit that surrounds their jail cell of a mind. Alan Watts question and answer of where do we go when we die, I think would be fascinating to hear in real time. Wow, dude, I love Alan. I I love that you love Alan Watson because Alan Watson, Alan Watts, uh, because <laughs> yes, he just yes. Every single time I'm lost, and um, it's quite a bit honestly because I think we're all trying to figure it out, right? And uh, he is so much. I'm so happy that people like repurpose his content on YouTube and just you can quickly you know just type in. Alan Watts and listen to like two minutes of his genius. And yeah, actually, dude, you know, who's another person you could tap into that uh, likes to talk about the afterlife a lot? Um, Joe Rogan. Uh, amazing, amazing content about the afterlife. I would and love to talk to Joe Rogan. That'd be so fun. Oh, right. Oh, man. We'll, ha we'll make it happen. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> hey, if you have a connection to Rogan, man, make it happen. Oh, you know what? I don't yet, but I use the keyword yet because yet. I believe full heartedly one day I'll, I'll get you into a cool. Joe Rogan podcast. If you don't make it for yourself, I guarantee it'll happen though. But um, yeah, I'm just a huge power or power of belief kind of guy. Uh, so the next question that I'd love to ask is, uh, you you really honestly do have this 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 gift of interviewing, and so. I believe that the quality of life comes down to the quality of questions. What do you think actually is the one habit that has contributed to formulating a quality question when you go and ask uh, your guests questions? <laughs> I think that people are going to feel redundancy from me, but they're also going to know that what I'm about to say feels true. It's when I'm curious and I'm feeling energy in my body that gives me more curiosity. Can I ask my question to a guest from that place? In other words, what makes me light up when I think about what the answer might be, or if I have general curiosity about what the answer might be, can I articulate the question from that high vibration spot? Can I saturate myself? Can I bathe in the excitement of an answer that helps me ask the question itself? Yeah, I think curiosity, 100%. Ah, oh, that's so, uh, I love that you say that because it's one thing, it's, you can't fake it. You just cannot you fake, fake curiosity. It. You can force it. And forced curiosity, mm -hmm. people can feel, but like true curiosity, it just comes across differently. It comes across uh, in a lighthearted way where people can feel the person's energy. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, so true. It is, uh... I think I have these three things, curiosity, compassion, and creativity. If if you're doing one of those things, uh, it's it's truly energizing, and it feels so good to be able to do those things. Uh, do you have a personal, like, sort of, like, maybe three go-to words or a personal philosophy that you try to um, follow or abide by? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually tattooed on my arm in Italian. Nice. 
Yeah, and it's on the inside of my right arm. It's se posso respirare, posso scegliere, which means if I can breathe, I can choose. And so if I can remind myself to take a deep breath and not be a victim of my biology, like in a moment, can I remind myself to breathe? Can I take a deep breath, let it go, and then make my decision about anything at all? Well, then I can choose. Like the power of choice only comes when the vessel we're making the choice from is clean. And so can we clean our vessel with a deep breath? That's, that's really like a guiding light for me. No, that is, that is so cool. I, I just picked that question up on a whim and I was like, I wonder, I wonder if he has something like that. That is, uh, <laughs> I got you, man. That's awesome. Um, we're so alike in, in so many ways and uh, so unlike as human beings in so many ways. That's why uh, life is special. But I, I really want to ask you this uh, question about... Um, this is a little, uh, this is, I guess, a little deeper. It's sort of a, just to make someone feel a little less alone is, uh, what's a thought that you keep having during the day or maybe, you know, just week to week that you kind of wish you didn't have anymore? Hmm. A thought that comes up knowing that we have this, this TFA, right? The thought, feeling, and action. I continue yeah. to have this thought that, for some reason, continues to show up that I'll eventually learn the lesson from. <laughs> but that thought is, you will not be successful and you will be alone. Now, what's interesting is that the way that those thoughts make me feel are paralyzed or like possibly they're true and there's fear around that. And then if I just take a massive deep breath and I then refocus where I actually want to have my feelings and actions towards and from, well, then the thought disappears. It's like, hmm, I'll say this for anyone listening. If you have thoughts like that that come up, just know that like you're a human being. And even people that have been doing personal development work for 30 years, guess what? They still have those thoughts, even if they don't want to acknowledge them, even if they don't want to talk about them. By talking about something and truly like by shining light and the light of words on the thoughts that might come up that aren't in our best service, that aren't aligned with our best self, that's how those thoughts disintegrate. But if you're angry at the thoughts, if you're angry that the thoughts keep coming up, or if you try to fight the thoughts, or that's when the universe just kind of like rubs its hands together and smiles, because then you still have lessons to be learned. We don't win anything by fighting. <laughs> we win in life. We, we continue to discover by enjoying the process. And we can't always enjoy the process. But in those moments where the thoughts come up, that I don't want to think, I remind myself to breathe. I allow myself to feel that they're actually not true. But the moment where I fall into a guideline of, oh my God, this thought's coming up. It's not true. I have to fight it. I have to get rid of it. What am I doing? <gasps> Just breathe and know that in that moment, you have the power. You truly have the power to change the way that you feel by thinking a different thought. Now, before you get to that point, I know it's easy and people are like, well, it's not that easy. And you know what? You're right. There's gut health that plays into that. There's genetics. There's epigenetics. There's all your life's health and wellness practices. There's beliefs that have actually been coded into your DNA from lineage before you. There's a lot of things that permit people or block people from flicking that light switch of choice in those high pressure moments when it really matters. And so the way that you give yourself the power to choose a different thought or the power to be happy is by committing to a life of doing your work and just wanting the truth. Can you just go to the truth as quickly as possible, even if it hurts? Well, it's going to hurt way less and you're going to feel so much better if you just go to the truth. And if you cry, if you blow snot, if you throw up, if you lose people, if you let a part of yourself die, great. Because the truth is undefeated anyways. I mean, we're all going to get to the truth. It's just like... <sighs> Are we willing to get there faster by leaning into it and breathing into it? Oh, wow. Did I, gosh, I wish we could just talk for like 14 hours <laughs> straight. I, I get pretty tired though. You, we'd both have to take a nap. Yeah, um, naps, of course. I've heard about the way you set up your environment. I would love to even talk about that for four more hours. But um, maybe you, you can come on again and we'll we'll see what new musings you have in your uh your your arsenal, I guess, and also your life. And uh, I just want to just do two more questions about um, one is just how can anybody that's listening right now, like instead of just hit, hitting next and going to the next podcast and 
and and going, oh, I need to busy my mind because I got this monkey brain and I just want to avoid more things. Instead, like actually reach out. Like how can anyone that wants to reach out to you and support you, what can they do and how can they do that? Oh man, this has been a really great conversation because you've created a nice space for me to just flow. So thank you for that. And on top of that, if some of the things I've been talking about these thoughts, these feelings, these actions, the emotional inventory, where you go in those moments where you don't want to feel, talk with us more at Wellness Force across everything on the web. Just, just at Wellness Force on Instagram, on social, join the Wellness Force community. You know, we're always in there talking to one another, you and I. It's like this conversation is a continuum. It's not like we're going to get some guide or some easy template that we can live life from. It's always adjusting along the way. So adjust with us. Come talk with us more in the Wellness Force group on Facebook and everywhere else too, Wellness Force Online. Yeah, and I will uh, absolutely post the link to get in that Facebook group um, in the show notes because it is, yeah, it is, there's just there's amazing, amazing stuff that's being spoken about there. And, and I don't want to actually let you know. Uh, you got to earn it. You got to get in there and get in the yeah. conversation, and 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 it's only gonna it's only gonna make your life better. And and Wellness Force is just such a solid name. And uh, the last question I'd love to ask you is 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 there anything that you kind of wish I I did ask you that uh, I left out? Um, just anything, dude. The floor is yours. Yeah, I I thought this was a great space to engage in this conversation around really just these pillars of truth, which is like, how do you breathe? How do you feel? Uh, and, and where are you going? What do you stand for? Those are the ones. I, I don't think we missed anything per se, because nothing's ever going to get missed. I think we covered a lot of ground for people to dig deeper into. So it's really like from the things that you heard, what were your thoughts? Notice your thoughts. Notice if those thoughts were really making you feel good or not. And then use that as your North Star. Wow. Jeez. Um, Josh, I, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, the work that you're doing and the, the, just the amount of like joy that I can see you having doing this work. So it's really, I, I don't even like using the, the word work, um, because you just have such joy in it and it, you do it really well. And, uh, pun very much intended. Um, <laughs> you do a great job at it. So keep it up. And, um, I can't wait to keep uh, this conversation going and, and maybe have you back on. And, uh, also just, I gotta say one more thing is, is, uh, you're, you're honestly a true hero of mine. So, uh, thank you for being a hero in my life. Oh man, you know, filling my chest, dude, making my day, uh, everything that you're doing, this line that you're walking, we're all actually fed from the same spring here. So the hero you see in me is the same one in you that you're in the process of creating and, and me too. You know, we're, we're all heroes on a different stage of the journey. So we're all getting home eventually. <laughs> we're all going there. <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Well, until next time, we'll uh, wrap it up there. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting the show by listening. Uh, wrap it up there. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting the show by listening. All right, there's another episode of Scratch Your Own Itch. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support the show by listening. Um, the biggest compliment you could ever pay me is just by sharing this because honestly it doesn't take much and it feels so good when people create something and take time and when I see someone take time to create something that really just changed my day either made me feel less alone maybe put a smile on my face made me laugh made me feel wiser I always want to share it with the world because why when I share something that resonates with me, why not share it? I mean, that's just kind of the thing that goes around, and it's free. It takes no time at all other than just a click of the button, share, on either Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
any of those social media platforms would be great to share this. So I really appreciate it. And I want to say that um, anybody who's looking to gain authority or expertise in their area and they don't want to take another year or year and a half to write a book and wait until that's published, I think the best way is right now is to start a podcast. So if you're at all interested in starting a podcast, if you meet the certain requirements, I would love to help you with a podcast and also get a website going for you as well. And this is not an easy task. It's hard to actually get it done and get it out there. So every now and then we need some help and I'm here for you. So please reach me at Logan at LoganTylerNelson.com if you're interested at all. And don't ever forget, you matter and you're enough.